All right, so picture this. You're working on your latest homebrew, mm -hmm. you know, carefully measuring out all your ingredients. Right. And suddenly you think, wait a second, is my pH, right? Yeah. That's where something like the Milwaukee MW102 PRO plus pH meter comes in. Oh, yeah, for sure. We're going to deep dive today into this product description. Okay. It's basically like a sales pitch, where, you know, aimed at brewers and winemakers. Right. Growers. Uh, anyone who needs to nail that pH. Yeah, exactly. Those folks who really need that precision. Yeah, they really emphasize this like plus or minus 0 0.02 pH accuracy. Mm. Sounds really precise, but I got to admit, like, I don't really know what that means practically. Yeah, well. Is that a big deal or? It's huge, especially yeah. when you're talking about something like brewing. You know, oh, really? Think about it. You're making like a delicate IPA. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get that hoppy bitterness just right. Right. But if that pH shifts even a little bit, <laughs> oh, wow. like even just 0. 0.1, yeah. it can throw the whole thing off. Mm -hmm. You know, it can get way too bitter or it can lose all the aroma. Huh. And so this meter, this accuracy, it gives you that control to really fine tune your water chemistry nice. and hit that flavor profile. Okay. So it's not just for like the pros in a lab then? No, no. Not it's for like serious home brewers too? Yeah. Anyone who's serious about their craft, you know. And speaking of serious, they call this probe that's included right. the SE220. They say it's lab grade. Yeah, it's a big deal. Which sounds pretty intense. Yeah, lab grade means it can handle the wear and tear of a professional setting. Okay. Constant use, maybe some messy samples, you know. Mm -hmm. It's built to last and still give you reliable results. So they're not messing around with this thing. No, they're not. But they also use all these terms like gel filled and double junction. Right. And honestly, that sounds more like sci fi than something I need for my homebrew. Yeah. I know what you mean. It can sound a little intimidating. Yeah. Can you break those down for me? Sure. Like, what does that actually mean? Let's start with gel filled. Okay. Think about a traditional pH probe. It's kind of like a finicky plant. Mm -hmm. You know, it needs constant watering. Okay. It uses a liquid solution to work. And that liquid evaporates over time. Right, right. But gel filled, uh -huh. it's like giving that plant a self-watering pot. Okay. The gel holds the solution. So the probe needs way less maintenance. Oh, so you don't have to like refill it all the time? No, not nearly as much. It saves a lot of time and hassle. Okay. That's definitely a plus. Yeah. What about this double junction thing? All right. So double junction. Is that like double the fun? It's kind of like a VIP area with like a two-step security check. Yeah. You know. Okay. In a regular probe, that sensitive measuring part is just exposed to whatever you're testing. Mm -hmm. But with double junction, there's an extra barrier that keeps out unwanted particles. So it's like protecting the... Yeah, especially mm -hmm. in complex liquids like wort or wine. It's like protecting the probe's inner sanctum. Mm -hmm. You know, making sure you get accurate readings no matter what you're testing. So it's all about keeping those delicate insides safe and accurate. Exactly. Yeah, you know, I'm already getting the sense that there's a lot more to using a pH meter than just dipping it in and reading a number. Yeah, there is. The description goes really deep into probe care, like cleaning and storage and calibration. Right. It seems like there's a whole science to it. There is a science to it. It's important to treat it right. Yeah. And one of the things they emphasize is to never store the probe in distilled or reverse osmosis water. Yeah. Which seems counterintuitive. It does, doesn't it? Like, wouldn't the purest water be the best? You would think so, right? Yeah, why is that a no-no? It all comes down to osmosis, Yeah. you see? Okay. Think of it like a crowded room in an empty room. Mm -hmm. People naturally want to spread out, right? Right. So the probe-sensitive bulb, it has a specific concentration of ions. Uh -huh. And when you put it in distilled water, those ions try to escape into the water. They're trying to get to that empty room. Exactly. They're trying to equalize the concentration. Oh. And that can damage the bulb and mess up its accuracy. So it's like the probe's trying to be generous and share its knowledge with the water. Yeah. But it ends up losing too much in the process. Exactly. So what is the best way to keep it happy? Well, they recommend a special storage solution. Okay. That keeps the probe hydrated and prevents any damage. It's like giving it a nice little spa treatment. Okay, so we've got this lab-grade probe. We're storing it properly, but what about actually using it? Right. Is it user-friendly, or do I need a chemistry degree? No, you don't need a chemistry degree. Okay. One thing they really highlight is how easy it is to use. Okay. They talk about the large, clear digital display, so you're not squinting at tiny numbers. That's good. And the measurement process is really simple. You just place the probe. You stir gently rate it. Wait for the reading to stabilize. 
That's it. So it does sound pretty easy. It is. Okay. You don't need any complex button sequences or anything like that. I, that's a relief because I am definitely more of a brewing enthusiast than a scientist. Yeah. Well, this is designed for enthusiasts like you. And speaking of enthusiasts, they've got some really great reviews from users. They do? People are calling it a killer tool mm. and praising the value for the price. Yeah, those user testimonials are really powerful. Yeah, for sure. It's one thing for the manufacturer to say it's great. Right. But hearing it straight from the people who are using it every day. Yeah, that means a lot more. Yeah, it gives you that extra level of confidence. I'm curious about this mention of... A wine-specific electrode. Oh, yeah. The ma 91 time b one Right. Does that mean you can, like, swap out parts of the meter for different applications? That's exactly what it means. Oh, cool. It highlights the modular nature of the system. Okay. You're not stuck with a one-size-fits-all solution. Mm -hmm. It's like having a Swiss Army knife for pH. You can adapt it to your specific needs. So whether you're brewing beer or making wine or even, like, tending to a hydroponic garden. Yeah, exactly. This thing can handle it. You got it. So it's versatile, accurate, durable, user-friendly. Mm -hmm. It's starting to sound like the ultimate pH companion. It really is a great tool. But let's be real. This level of quality probably doesn't come cheap. Well, you're right. High-quality instruments usually come with a price tag. Right. But here's the thing. Think of it as investment. Okay. A ruined batch of beer or a spoiled vintage of wine can cost way more than a good pH meter. That's true. This is about preventing those costly mistakes. I see. And ensuring consistent results, which ultimately saves you money in the long run. That's a great point. Yeah. Sometimes you got to spend money to make money. Right. Or in this case, to save money. Exactly. And avoid brewing disasters. That's right. But beyond the specifics of this meter, I'm starting to think about the bigger picture of pH, you know? Yeah. The description focuses so much on getting the measurement right. Mm. But what are the consequences of getting it wrong? Right. What happens when it's off? Yeah. How does pH actually affect us That's a great question in our everyday lives and one that leads us into a fascinating exploration of how ph impacts not just our hobbies yeah but everything mm. our everyday lives i am intrigued mm, it's a big topic but unfortunately we're out of time for this part of our deep dive okay. we'll be back soon to explore those wider implications of ph sounds good and uncover just how much this seemingly simple measurement affects the world around us. Looking forward to it. Stay tuned. All right. Welcome back to our pH adventure. Before the break, we were talking about how important it is to keep that pH probe happy and healthy. Right. Got to keep it in tip-top shape. You mentioned distilled water is like a big no-no for storage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a common mistake. But I'm still a little confused about why it seems so pure and harmless. I know it seems counterintuitive, mm -hmm. but let me try to explain it this way. Okay. Imagine you're at a party and there's a bowl of chips sitting on the table. Okay. I like where this is going. If people are all crowded around the chips, they're going to disappear yeah. pretty quickly, right? Yeah. But if those chips are spread out on a huge table, they're going to last a lot longer. Okay. I'm following. So what does that have to do with distilled water and pH probes? So those chips are like the ions inside the probes sensitive glass bulb. Okay. Distilled water is like that huge empty table. It has very few ions of its own. Oh, I see. So when you put the probe in distilled water, those ions are going to try to spread out into the water to try to balance things out. So it's like the probe's trying to share its chips with the entire party. Exactly. But it ends up with nothing left for itself. That's right. And that loss of ions can actually damage the bulb and make the probe less accurate over time. So instead of distilled water, what's the best way to store the probe? What's like the pH probe equivalent of a good party snack? They recommend using a special storage solution. Okay. It's specifically designed to keep the probe hydrated and maintain that right ion balance so the probe doesn't feel the need to share its chips. Okay, so probe storage check. But what about keeping it clean? I imagine all sorts of gunk could build up on it, especially if you're measuring, like, thick wort or wine must. You're absolutely right over time that residue from those samples can affect the probe's accuracy. Yeah, makes sense. But the good news is... Cleaning is pretty straightforward. Yeah. They recommend soaking the probe in a special cleaning solution for about 20 minutes. So it's like a little bath for the probe. Yeah, exactly. A nice little spa treatment to keep it fresh and functioning at its best. And then, of course, there's calibration. Right. I'm guessing that's important to make sure the meter is giving you accurate readings. Calibration is essential. It's like tuning a musical instrument. Oh, okay. you got to make sure it's hitting the right notes. Right. The MW102PRO Plus has a two-point automatic calibration. Uh-huh which means you just use two solutions with known pH values 
to adjust the meter's readings. Okay. It's a simple process, but it makes a big difference in ensuring your measurements are spot on. So it's not a set it and forget it kind of thing. You need to calibrate regularly. Exactly how often you calibrate. Depends on how much you use the meter and the types of samples you're measuring. Uh -huh. As a rule of thumb, it's good to calibrate at least once a month. Okay, so we've covered storing, cleaning, and calibrating the probe. It's more involved than I initially thought, but I'm starting to see why it's so important for accurate pH measurement. It's all about respecting the tool and understanding the science behind it. Speaking of science, I'm curious about how the actual measurement process works. Okay. Is it as simple as just dipping the probe into a liquid and reading a number? It's pretty much that simple. Okay. You dip the probe in, give it a little stir to make sure the liquid is evenly distributed. Yeah. And then you wait for the reading to stabilize on the display and the meter does the rest of the work. So it converts those electrical signals from the probe into a pH value? Exactly. Cool. They also mentioned portability in the description. Mm -hmm. How easy is it to move this thing around? Could I take it with me to a friend's house for a brew session? Absolutely. They designed it with portability in mind. It's compact and lightweight, so you can easily take it on the go. Nice. That's perfect for someone like me who likes to collaborate on brewing projects. No more lugging heavy equipment around. Hi. Speaking of collaborations, I'm curious about that wine-specific electrode you mentioned earlier. Right. The MA999B1. Yeah, can you tell me a bit more about how that works and why someone might need it? Sure. So the MA9919B1 wine electrode is specifically designed for measuring pH in wine. You know, wine can be pretty acidic, ah. and it often contains particles that can clog up a regular probe. Oh, okay. But this specialized electrode is built to withstand those conditions and provide accurate readings even in the presence of those particles. So it's like a heavy-duty probe for serious winemakers. Exactly. It's designed to thrive in that environment and give winemakers the precise pH measurements they need. It seems like they've thought of everything with this meter catering to both brewers and winemakers. Yeah, they really understand their target audience. Offering a versatile tool that can adapt to different needs. They're providing a platform that can grow with your passion, whether you're a seasoned brewer or just starting out with winemaking. I'm also noticing this theme of durability throughout the description. They keep emphasizing lab grade and how it's built to last. Right. Does that come up in the user reviews as well? Definitely. A lot of reviewers praise the meter's durability and reliability. They talk about how it can handle daily use and still give consistent results. That's good to hear, especially considering this is an investment. You want something that will last. Absolutely. And that durability adds to the overall value. You're not constantly worrying about replacing parts or dealing with malfunctions. So we've covered the features, ease of use, adaptability, durability. It seems like the MW102PRO Plus really checks all the boxes. It's a great all-around meter. But I'm so curious about one thing, the price, the description dances around it, but I'm guessing this level of quality doesn't come cheap. You're right. It's not the cheapest pH meter out there. But here's the key takeaway. Think of it as an investment in quality and peace of mind. A good pH meter can save you from a lot of costly mistakes. Right, like a ruined batch of beer. Exactly. Or a less than perfect wine vintage, or even problems with your hydroponic garden in the long run that accuracy and reliability can more than pay for themselves. That makes sense. Sometimes you got to spend money to make money, or in this case, to save money. Right. And avoid brewing disasters. Exactly. But before we wrap up this part of our deep dive, I want to shift gears a bit and talk about the bigger picture of pH. Okay, that was good. We've been focusing on this specific meter. Yeah, I've been nuts and bolts. But now I want to zoom out and explore how pH influences the world around us. You know, Just think picture. Yeah, from the food we eat to the environment we live in. I like it. Let's zoom out. But we'll have to save that for the next part of our deep dive. Yeah. Stay tuned as we uncover the hidden power of pH in everyday life. Welcome back. We've been talking a lot about pH meters, you know, focusing on the Milwaukee MW102PRO Plus. Yeah, all those features and how to take care of it. But now it's time to like zoom out and look at the bigger picture, you know? Right, get a wider perspective. We've talked about getting that pH measurement right, but what happens when we get it wrong? Yeah, what are the real world consequences? How does pH actually affect us in our daily lives? Well, it's easy to think of pH as just a number. Right, just a technical thing. But it's really a fundamental force that impacts so many things. Like what? It influences everything from how our food tastes, okay. to the health of our bodies, uh -huh. and even the environment around us. Wow, that's pretty big. So where should we even begin? Like, what are some everyday examples of pH in action? Okay, well, let's start with something we all experience food. Okay, I like food. Think about that tangy bite of a lemon or the sourness of vinegar. Mm -hmm. 
That's pH at work. Really? Those sour tastes are caused by acids, and the strength of that acidity is directly related to the pH value. So the lower the pH, the more sour it tastes. Exactly. Okay, I'm starting to see the connection, but is it just about taste? Does pH affect food in other ways? It plays a huge role in food preservation. Oh, interesting. Like, think about pickles. Okay. When you soak cucumbers in vinegar, you're creating this acidic environment. Right. That stops harmful bacteria from growing. That's why they can last so long. Exactly. That's why pickles can sit on the shelf for months. Yeah. It's the same idea with sauerkraut and other fermented foods. So the acidity is like a natural preservative. Exactly. pH is a secret weapon in the fight against food spoilage. That's pretty cool. But is it all about just keeping things from going bad? Does pH affect flavor in any other way? Oh, yeah, definitely. pH can actually influence how we experience other tastes. Like what? Like sweetness and saltiness, for example. Okay. A slightly acidic cup of coffee yeah. can actually taste sweeter and less bitter really? than a more alkaline brew. Huh. I never knew that. It all comes down to how those different molecules interact with our taste buds based on the pH level. Wow. pH is like a flavor magician. It's more than just preventing spoilage. It's about enhancing and balancing flavors. It sounds like it. I never realized how much pH was affecting my morning coffee. Yeah, it's everywhere. Okay, so we've got taste and preservation, but does pH do anything else to food? It also affects texture. Really? Think about the difference between a fluffy cake and a dense bread. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. pH level actually influences how the proteins interact with each other during baking. Uh huh. And that affects the final texture of what you're making. I'm suddenly looking at my food in a whole new way, but it sounds like pH does more than just influence our food. You said it affects our health, too. Right. Our blood needs to maintain a specific pH. Right. A slightly alkaline pH, around 7.4. To function properly. Yeah, for everything to work, right? If that pH gets too far out of whack, it can cause some serious health issues. So our bodies are constantly working to keep that balance. Exactly. Our yeah. bodies are amazing at regulating pH, but things like our diet. Okay. Stress, even some medications can throw things off. So we need to be mindful of what we're putting into our bodies and how we're managing our stress levels. They're all connected. Right. It's like this delicate dance going on inside of us all the time. Mm. What can we do to help our bodies maintain that pH balance? Well, eating a balanced diet with lots of fruits and vegetables okay. is a great place to start. They contain alkalizing minerals that help to neutralize the acids our bodies produce. Okay, so good food. Yeah, and managing stress. Mm -hmm. Things like exercise or meditation can help too. So taking care of ourselves in a holistic way. Right, it's all about listening to our bodies mm -hmm. and making choices that support our overall health. It's not just what we eat, but how we live our lives. Exactly, it's all interconnected. And we can't forget about the environment, right? Right, we can't leave that out. You mentioned that pH affects the environment too. Absolutely, think about acid rain. Oh yeah. It's caused by pollutants in the atmosphere <laughs> reacting with water to form acids okay which then fall to the earth as rain and that acidic rain can damage forests lakes even buildings it's like a chain reaction yeah pollution disrupts the ph balance in the atmosphere which messes with the ph of rainwater and that leads to all sorts of environmental problems it really highlights how everything is connected it does that ph level is a powerful indicator of balance whether we're talking about our bodies the food we eat or the planet we live on exactly well this has been quite the journey it has we started with a ph meter for brewers and winemakers right and ended up exploring the impact of ph on our entire world it's amazing how something seemingly so technical can lead to such broad insights. It really shows that there's always more to learn, and sometimes the most unexpected discoveries are right in front of us. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive into the world of pH. It was my pleasure. Remember, pH is everywhere. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep an eye on that pH scale. You never know what you might find.